Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dotan. I'm uh, the CTO of a group called The Guild. Uh, we're a group of open source developers uh, mainly focused on GraphQL uh, and its ecosystem. Uh, I'm here today uh, to talk with you about GraphQL, uh, TypeScript, uh, the integration of the two, uh, and toolings uh, around it, uh, and also a bit about uh, the next generation of uh, TypeScript and GraphQL integration. Uh, so let's start with the basics. Why do we even need uh, this kind of integration? Um, each uh, language uh, has its own type system. Um, GraphQL has its own type system where you define your uh, GraphQL schema. Uh, it's called SDL. And there is uh, TypeScript, which is, has its own uh, um, type system. So while writing uh, your GraphQL schema, um, you need to keep in sync your um, GraphQL SDL where you define the actual schema and your TypeScript code where you write your actual implementation in resolvers. Um, so you can either do it uh, manually and keep it in sync manually, or you can use tooling for that. Uh, this is what I'm going to discuss uh, in this case. Um, Keeping uh, the two type systems uh, in sync is very important because uh, consider like a field that you have removed or added to your GraphQL schema, it needs to be uh, reflected in the TypeScript uh, code. So keeping these two in sync is important and will probably reduce most of your uh, um, runtime errors related to GraphQL and TypeScript. Um, so a few years ago, I had issues with uh, GraphQL and TypeScript. So I started uh, with a small open source called GraphQL Cogen. Um, this was four year years ago, and today we have a huge community. Uh, and we're not generating only TypeScript, it's also Flow, C Sharp, Java, much more. Uh, and we're generating more than just uh, types, we're generating like an actual code. Um, that can help you to improve your uh, developer experience and your type safety. Um, Cogen is a very flexible tool. You can write your own plugins uh, and configure the output, hook into the generation process and uh, add your own code. Um, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the most popular plugins uh, that we have today that are related to uh, TypeScript. Um, so the first one is TypeScript, the one that I uh, mentioned before. Uh, this plugin just generates um, TypeScript types out of your GraphQL schema. Um, and this seems very similar because the type systems are kind of uh, similar and we aim to generate code in TypeScript that uh, is similar as possible to the GraphQL schema. Um, but GraphQL schema isn't all. We also have queries, mutations, and everything that involves a selection set, which is one of the most powerful features of GraphQL, the ability to choose fields and select exactly what you need uh, and not more than that. So uh, given the fact that you can choose uh, the fields, it means that your types are kind of dynamic and based on your um, selection of fields. So we are also generating types based on your GraphQL operations. Um, so when you use it in your code, you'll have uh, fully type safety. Um, but this is only types. We're also generating more. Uh, as I said, we're generating code. So uh, here is like a small example for uh, uh, another plugin called uh, TypeScript React Apollo. Uh, and this plugin generates um, ready to use uh, React hooks uh, based on uh, Apollo client um, and on your operations. So it basically takes your GraphQL operations, uh, pre-compiles those uh, and creates uh, ready to use hooks based on your operation name. So when you use it in your code, all you need to do is just to import the hook, uh, provide your variables uh, and then use the data. And the idea is that we are burning the types into the generated hook. So you don't need to specify manually types or anything uh, like that. You just get autocomplete and type validation for the variables and the result type. Uh, so this is uh, pretty cool. Um, as I said, we're not generating just types and that, we're generating more. Um, there is Resolver's uh, signature. So if you're a backend developer writing your uh, GraphQL schema and implementation, um, you can generate a complete Resolver's uh, signature out of your schema and um, integrate your own model types into that signature. 
Um, we're generating a few utilities for Apollo client, uh, but not only, also for Oracle, GraphQL request, view, stencil, Angular, whatever, uh, you name it. Um, and it's not only JavaScript and uh, TypeScript, we're also generating uh, more for more languages. Uh, and we're integrating basically with every tool that uh, available on this kind of uh, ecosystem. So we, you can use it with uh, Webpack and with Gatsby and Next.js. Um, and recently we introduced a new plugin for React Query if you're using it. Um, so give it a try. We have uh, a very nice uh, live demo on our website. You can just try it and see what is the output uh, based on uh, the input, which you can just uh, change. Uh, or add. Um, so give it a try. Um, so let's move to the next topic. Um, recently, uh, we introduced a new concept and a plugin in uh, GraphQL Cogent called uh, Type Document Node. So basically, what we're doing here, we are taking uh, your GraphQL operation and uh, we are generating a document node out of it, which is just a uh, an object representation of the GraphQL operation, nothing more than that. But what we're adding is the types of um, the result and the types of uh, the variables burned into that object. So if you are using uh, a, a client library that uh, supports a typed document node, you can just um, pre-compile your GraphQL operations into a document node and just use it uh, with your library and you don't need to specify anything else like you don't need to add uh, Types you don't need to explicitly set the generics or something like that. You can just use uh, the types as is uh, And you'll get type safety on your variables and on, on your result um, But also you'll get uh, auto completion uh, Based on the selection set that you chose and the fields that you wanted to use. So this is pretty awesome um, so if uh, you wanted to know how it works, so if you're not using type document node, what we're generating for you today uh, is um, a separate type for uh, the result type of that operation, a separate type for the variables of that operation, uh, and a document node. Uh, as I said, it's just a compiled version of your GraphQL uh, query. Um, but these two are these three are separate. Um, each one of them is defined separately, uh, and when you use it, you need to specify uh, two types and the uh, the object of the document itself. Um, this might be uh, um, an issue because using it like that means that uh, if you'll get the type wrong, um, you won't catch it during development, and you might get it only uh, on runtime where it's too late. So we're thinking of how we can avoid this kind of explicitly set uh, types. So what we, did, what we did is uh, we, take, we took that document node, uh, we took that uh, type that we generated for uh, the result type and the type for the variables, and we just merged all of, the, all of all the three together into a single object. And the idea is that we're using TypeScript uh, inference to um, automatically detect the types based on the document that you are passing. So if you're using uh, a library that supports uh, type document node, all you need to do is just provide your GraphQL operation and that's it, you'll just get automatic uh, types uh, and auto completion based on that operation. So this is pretty awesome and uh, here there, are no, there is no place for mistakes uh, because you don't need to specify types manually or anything else. Just use it and it will be typed. Um, so at the moment, type document node is uh, supported directly from GraphQL JS. Um, the type itself uh, is part of the GraphQL JS implementation, so we can you can just use it from there. Um, and this is gradually uh, becomes the standard for this kind of integration. Um, Apollo Client three and Urkel uh, adopted it, and they are now using it. And um, if you're using the type document node, all you need to do is um, just specify it and the types will be inferred automatically. Uh, if you are not using uh, those libraries, you can just um, go to the uh, type document node repository where you can see a list of uh, additional plugins, uh, additional libraries that we support. Uh, you can just use a patch that we provide and it will add support for those libraries um, until they will support it. 
Um, so, so far with uh, type document node, um, my next topic uh, for today uh, is the next version uh, of TypeScript, which is TypeScript uh, 4.1 4 uh, and the new awesome feature that it has. Um, in this version of TypeScript, you're going to be able to um, use strings and do manipulation um, for those strings at the level of this TypeScript compiler. This uh, sounds a bit vague, I know, but think of um, um, like taking string types that you define on TypeScript, like you see here, and just do manipulations for it at the level of your TypeScript compiler. So here, for example, we define a type uh, with the string world, and then we have a new type with greeting, and we just um, um, uh, concat this string, and uh, we have uh, a new type with that output. Um, so this is simple, but we can do much more with it.